Hello everyone, hope that you are doing well. Today in this video, we will be making a Spring Boot application and establishing a database connection. So here I will be developing a Spring Boot application and uh, establishing a connection with the database with using MySQL. So in this video, we will be using MySQL database. So previously I made a video of Spring Boot application, a hello world example. If you are new to this, you can have first look to the Spring Boot application Hello World example and then you can switch to this video. So let's get started. Go, uh, let's go to our IDE and to make a Spring Boot application, let's go to the files, then new and then go to Spring Starter Project. So here you, uh, you can fill the details accordingly as I mentioned in the previous video as well. So there are basic dependencies that we require. I will discuss those first. We require the basic dependency of Spring Web that is required to develop web applications and then we require Spring Data JPA Spring Data JPA this is the underlying Java persistence API which is used for uh, inserting deleting into our database all the operations to our database and as i mentioned that we are using mysql database so we need mysql driver as well so we need mysql driver as well so you will finish the project and the project will get imported into your id i have already imported the project so let's go and see the structure of the project the structure of the project is like this and in the java let's go to the main class that is this test to application it has a main method and this actually runs our application so starting up with we have to store data of an employee so we'll be making a model class of an employee that is the entity of our uh, the, uh, the entity that we will be storing into the database so let's make a package of model class first and we'll say it as dot model and then we'll be making a class of employee we need some basic annotations to tell that this is the entity and this will be uh, the object that will be stored into the database so I'll, I'll not discuss much on the annotations that I'm using here if required if there is much of interest I'll make another video and tell you that why is this these uh, annotations are required and what are what is the purpose that we are using these annotations so I'll say a table and I'll define the name of the table as employee so some data members that is int id for uniqueness string name and string designation so for id we need some unique factors to generate that automatically how the id will be generated so we'll use at the rate generated value and we'll pass as strategy equals generation type dot auto and if you want to give names to these fields in your database you can give it by saying at the red column and you can give name equals say it employ name so this is the object now we have to declare some getters and setters as well so we'll go to source and we'll generate getters and setters for all our data members so select all and generate so the getters and setters are being generated we don't need a constructor as default constructor is already being provided by the entity so our model class is being made now now we'll make a repository a repository is used for actually performing operations with our database so we'll make a package of dot repository 
and we'll make a class that is employee repository employee repo sorry I have done a mistake here we'll not define a class we'll define actually an interface and we'll be extending some of the functionalities of JPA repository right we'll be making an interface that is employee repo and then we'll be extending this employee repo with JPA repository yes so we need the return type of return type as our employee so we'll give it as employee and our ID is be defined as integer so we'll give the return type as integer so here what will happen is that employee repo will have all the functionality that are declared in JPA repository so what is there in JPA repository JPA repository provides predefined methods to find to save to delete uh, some records from the database from your entity so here the repo is being made now we'll make a controller class so we'll have a controller package first so we'll make a package that is dot controller and then we'll be defining our controller class so here is our employee controller so employee controller is being made now so here also I'll be using some of the annotations as I said that if there is much of interest I'll make separate video and explain these annotations why are these being used so I'll make a method that is public and it will return an employee object yes and we'll say save employee so after saving it will return the employee object now in the save method we'll require some details to save it right we need the name of the employee we need the designation of the employee id will not supply because id is been auto generated that is the unique that is a primary key for our table so we'll have requ res request body so we'll have a request body of employee and employee so we'll be giving some of the annotations that is post mapping as we are posting some data so our endpoint name would be save employee and now we have to return it right so how to return it as we have as we have uh, made our repository how we'll consume that repository object so there is method that we can uh, say it as employee uh, employee repo employee repo equals to new employee repo right but here a new concept that is dependency injection we'll inject that bean into our controller and use the functionalities so how to inject it we use auto wired annotation so we'll use auto wired and we'll say employee repo employee repo and we have we'll say it as emp dot save emp dot save sorry sorry uh, we can't declare as em we should say it as employee repo yes we should say it as employee repo employee repo dot save now in the save method we have to supply the entity we will be supplying the entity as emp now it will save the object and then return the object with the unique id as well so this is the coding part done now we will go to our database and first of all we we are using mysql so we need to make first of all the schema so I am using a test DB schema so I will run this query and see if my schema is being made and here is my schema made for convenience mark it as default schema right 
and now you can see that no tables are there no views are there so we'll run the uh, code uh, we'll run our server and our tables would be created automatically so how are we telling this uh, employee application that you have to make uh, tables into test db schema only so here we go into the resource folder and we go to application properties here we define some of the properties which will tell the application that you have to make the table in the test db schema and the username the password has been supplied the ddl auto uh, property up equals to update this means that whenever the server is uh, again and again started you have to update the pre-existing configurations you don't have to create it you don't have to like what what happens in create that it will delete first and then create it again right we have said that update if already existing you have to update the those properties right now we'll run the application and test it right uh, we'll so here what we'll do is we'll run the application again and we'll see it like we'll run the application and we'll insert some data into the database and check whether the data has been inserted into the database or not so the application is running uh, you can see in the console as well so here our application is running and yes the application has started let's go to the postman and let's post some data so we'll say kevin one and software engineer so we'll send the request so yes it has been saved with the id2 let's go to the database and we'll run the query and we can see that the data has been inserted so this was it from this video hope that you like the video and do share your feedback and queries into the comment section do share subscribe uh, share and subscribe the channel and i'll get back to you again with some new ideas of spring boot applications